Yeah, what's up guys? Welcome back to another reaction video. Today we is reacting to a video titled What Little Pump Could Have Been. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. I fuck with I fuck with D Rose. That song go hard. I'm gonna tell you another thing, bro. I don't react to videos that necessarily I think it's fun to like Well, I don't react to videos that are popular, like popular popular then i react to stuff i like to watch so that's why we're reacting to this video i right? just so y'all know i don't mean don't mean telling me why are you why are you reacting to a video with fucking 150k because i want to but Little pump exploded into the limelight locking in collaborations with heavyweights like kanye west little wayne little uzi vert and the late xxx and tassion within a single year from experiencing quick success and becoming the poster child of an entire era his downfall was even more rapid and now it seems little pump has dropped out of the mainstream i'm on the molly i'm on the bean i'm on the molly i'm on the bean what could have been Damn, fucking memories, bro. Shit. Gazzy what happened Garcia, to Pump, born in bro? Miami on August 17th, Y2K, immersed himself in rap from a young age Gazzy as an escape from Garcia. reality. Despite facing academic challenges and complaints from teachers since elementary school, his classmates spoke of him to be friendly and admirable. In 2011, he started freestyling for fun over beats he found on YouTube, occasionally collaborating with friends on songs. However, his focus shifted before going into high school. Pump was struggling to find a sense of purpose and direction in his life, which caused him to start stealing from local shops and taking drugs with his friends, which prompted his parents to threaten him to go to military after high school. Oh, hell but this nah. all changed when Pump met his best friend Omar. AKA Smoke Perp. Pump and Perp met through Omar's uncle, who happened to be Garcia's stepfather. Omar and Garcia formed a tight bond during this period and were both abused by their relative. Cause like he'll always argue with me for stupid shit, you know? The house smell like weed, retarded shit like that. I used to get that's not that, that's not that retarded, bro. Into with him. I'm like, bro, you're fucking bum. And he got mad and he was trying to fight me and shit. And I put on a strap and I aimed that shit at him, bro. Just spooked, he ran inside. This only increased their destructive behaviors, resulting in both being expelled from high school, with Pump being expelled from every high school in the state of Florida for a reckless habit of rioting. Bro, he was a bad student. He, he started a riot. They closed the whole school down. There was helicopters and shit, and niggas getting stabbed and shit. Canines and shit. They kicked me out of all public schools. I'm not allowed in the public school no more. I was in some opportunity school, but they kicked me out of that shit. It's that like shit where is they like, send all the bad kids. Yeah, shit like bro. jail school. <laughs> I don't know how I got into music shit. Oh, no, it was because of I made, Kurt, I made him. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he went freestyle, but he, yeah. he didn't want to record. Nah, bro, you're going to record right now, and I set it up. I made him record his first song. Yeah. The following year was 2016, and the landscape of rap was making a dramatic shift. A fresh sound with kids bringing an I don't give a fuck attitude and not caring for the culture of hip hop. These kids were having fun, dancing, and bringing the refreshing energy the game needed. This wave of young rappers became beacons for a new generation who admired their carefree and rebellious approach to their music and lifestyle. The kids were taking over, and hip hop was yeah. not- Hey bro, I bro, I'm I'm actually realizing right now, bro. Like, this has to be the my my, my most favorite era, bro, of rap. Like, bro, I, bro, these songs are so nostalgic, bro. The kids were taking over, and hip hop was not ready. That's for right. Them. That's right. I'm telling you right now, if you pull out one of them old beats, I'm not rapping on it. You see me, bro? I am a rock star, bro. I'm not rapping on that type stuff. We'll decide. Let me. Trump, my my fans enough. won't be disappointed. They get it. No, they will. No, they but, won't. Ah, cause all I got is old man beats, and you're not built. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen. It's gonna be a lot of young guys coming up here, and they ain't gonna want rap on that. I'm trying to tell you, it's changing. Yo, look. It's I changing. Y'all get to like 27, 28, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and y'all niggas get to struggling. Y'all be trying to come back. I ain't gonna struggle, bro. All right, we gonna see. We, we gonna, gonna see. Oh, you gonna, gonna learn. And, and guess what? I'm gonna be yeah. <laughs> then tell me what you You're on a fucking radio show, bro Cause like, How much money can you be making on a fucking radio show, bro? Shut your stupid ass One from hip-hop I, I mean, I'm making music, bro I'm just having fun You love have it. a problem it's with like... just having fun and fun what, what do you want me to say? You want me to say I want you to be aware of your business I want you to know whether you in a 360 or not I want you Bro, go on, bro I, cu I couldn't I couldn't be on one of these fucking interviews bro no bro talk to me like this bro i'm crashing out bro 
everybody gonna see me crash out and beat your fucking ass, bro. Don't be talking to me like that, bro. You appreciate the culture well, you change wanna, your life. You fucking lying, bro. Oh, bro, 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 I'm fucking. I'm. Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking jail, bro, for hitting him with a fucking cup, bro. It took you from oh my lord, bro. Eating fucking oodles and noodles. I want you, who's well spoken. Just some heart. fucking respect my name, bro. Lower your fucking voice. Articulates himself well. My nigga. Chill. Yeah. Oh, what's the kid? Lil Yachty, mm -hmm. Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah. They're like, yo, we're not rappers. Mm -hmm. We're just rock stars. We bro. call it mumble rap. SoundCloud then experienced a massive rise, providing a platform where anyone could make and share their music, even from their bedroom, while cultivating an Damn, gassed up. Damn, I've heard that. Bro, that shit. But if y'all know, y'all know, bro. And nah, bro, that's wild. SoundCloud bro. became a site where music fans could go and seek out the next big artist. The smaller and more obscure the artists, the more intrigued these fans became about their music. Lyrical Lemonade was also on the rise, which is a music video production channel made by Cole Bennett. Lyrical Lemonade started putting a lot of new up and coming SoundCloud rappers in the spotlight. Garcia wasn't taking music seriously at the time, only releasing a few tracks from the influence from his friend Omar. But Omar was starting to gain a following of his own under the name Smoke Perp in the SoundCloud scene. Tell that whole con count this dope, huh? Energy, which prompted one of his first huge opportunities to have a video made by the soon to be huge Cole Bennett. Cole knew he had to keep making videos for new buzzing artists to keep his following going. So we drove 20 hours from Chicago to Miami. Cole was there for Smoke Perp, but Omar and Garcia were never seen away from each other. If Perp was somewhere, so was Pump. So Pump basically became a backup dancer for Perp's first hit song, Damn. Ski Mask. I'm taking all your shit, yeah, I'm kicking in that dope. Cole found Pump hilarious. He was already aware of his social media antics online and the music he had released prior. Man, shut your bitch ass up. No can do that here. What? You want to call police or your security? Nigga, I don't give a fuck. A little pump in this bitch, man. Fuck that. <laughs> this for a crash out, bro. Hey, hey, no. No, hey. He thought Pump could become a star, and it wouldn't just be for his music. Cole and Pump then what collaborate the on the fuck? song D-Rose for the lyrical and Oh yeah! 80 on my wrist. 80 on my wrist. What? 100 on my wrist. 80 on my wrist. Becoming his biggest yeah. song to this point, racking up a half a million views from his first Eddie on my wrist. D-Rose, 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 D-Rose. It was safe to say that Pump was yeah. starting to build a fan base of his own, separate from Smoke Perp. But what Pump didn't know was that his life was about to change forever. The Lights Global is a music and entertainment company that was very aware of how social media was going to change the music industry. They were already responsible for blowing up some dance trends like Juju on the beat. They found Little Pump and thought they found the next biggest star in pop culture. They signed him to a social media deal. The social media agency would push his music to the network of a variety of influencers on social media while encouraging Pump to keep posting his wild social media antics online to get him more attention. All y'all niggas some bitch niggas in this shit, man. Fuck all y'all niggas, man. You a bitch, nigga. I run this shit. And the company couldn't have been more right. Old head hip hop fans really? were already upset with the emergence of the 2016 sound and act. See, bro, if you're mad, bro, you gatekeeping, bro. You actually gatekeeping, bro. Like, don't be mad about someone and it only innovating in the fucking. In 2017. Catch me outside. How about that? Bitch, bitch, a massage. This a big. Look, bro. Look, bro. I, 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 I keep it a stack, all right? I fuck with this music, bro. In 2017. Catch me outside. How about that? Bitch, bitch, a massage. This a big watch. Diamonds dripping off with a clock. Social media became more important than your actual music. The yeah. more attention you had on social media, the more money and clout you had. Yeah. White wrist. White wrist. <laughs> nah, you are the Ooh, boogie. Lost a bitch. I got a fat that I lost to, you know what I'm saying? Whole lot of gang shit, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I hear a balling in the eye gate. I dropped 200 racks on this car. The clout era, taking music to the most generic form possible, <laughs> popping pills and getting face tattoos for the sake of garnering nah, attention was, that was clout. Though. The little pump seamlessly embodied this lifestyle and became the perfect fit as the poster child for this era. Yeah, I came in with a saw. Ooh, yeah, I came in with a saw. Yeah. Hey, I got designer from head to my toe. I'm a designer, my bitch. Moon and brace at a bow like ooh. Moon and 
hit after hit, each gaining hundreds of millions of views. Nah, I'm the top 40k. I didn't know he was like that. He was trying to wait, 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 40 million. My fault, my fault, my fault. situation he could, but Jeez. he wasn't the only one. Because while all this was happening, his best friend Smoke Perp was dropping hits and exploding in the industry as well. I don't want friends, I want Audis. And while Perp and Pump were unhinged, so were their fans. A random chant at one of Smoke Perp's shows started out of nowhere, with the fans chanting, Fuck J. Cole. Fuck J. Perp and Pump weren't sure what was happening, but Pump saw an opportunity and he ran with it. Wallen, that's 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 actually the definition of crashing out, bro. Why would you call him out? Like for what? Bro, you put some respect on his name, bro. J. Cole is known for his humble and responsible demeanor with a very lyrical style of music. J. Cole is very respected in rap, so this just gave another reason why people were hoping to see a downfall with these two kids. But talking about this situation just promoted Pump and Perp even more, which was exactly what they wanted. It was time for Pump to capitalize on his exposure. He signed a five album deal at just 16 years old with Warner Records. It was the perfect time to drop his debut album, which was guaranteed to garner attention. Little Pump, the self-titled album was scheduled to be released in the summer of 2017, but ended up getting delayed for Pump to drop his biggest song ever, Gucci Gang. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. His biggest song ever, summer of 2017, but ended up getting delayed for Pump to drop his biggest song ever, mm. Gucci Gang. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Racking up millions of views on SoundCloud and later had a music video with the release of his album, Gucci Gang became the anthem for what the cloud era was and the 1.1 billion views damn up, that shit was yeah. stupid Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. pump's debut project generated significant success and influence in the soundcloud scene even showing some love from critics for what it was i'm feeling a light decent seven Late. Yo, you're fucking bullshitting, bro. You're, bro you had you were bro you were that seven but you're bullshitting Nine bro. were making fun of them what the fuck bro the entire internet was talking about him and he had a strong community of fans alongside millions of casual listeners. It seemed like he was unbeatable. If you hated him or loved him, he was going to be talked about regardless. We always see talented kids at a young age get taken advantage of, and Pump could have been the next victim in the industry. Pump was paid $345,000 up front for his first album, but 15% revenue on his next four albums. Pump got the money and promotion up front, and now he felt there was nothing left for his label to offer him. Instead of falling victim to the label he signed to when he was 16, he lawyered up and secured legal counsel, turning the tables on his initial deal, completely finessing his label. Little Pump was now a free agent, and every major music label was trying to sign him. He ended up signing with the same label before. Crazy. But this time, it was for one album for $8 million, completely different from before. So what? entering the next year... Bro, what the fuck did he even do, bro? Someone please explain what the fuck he did right now. I don't... Bro, what? So you kept the money they gave you, you left the deal, and you came back to do another deal. Is that what, is that what I'm getting? And he got paid for that deal as well? So you scammed them, and they, they're like, all right, it's all right. Yeah, we'll give you $8 million more. Is that what happened? Like, what? Pump came out dropping massive Wait. tracks. Drug addicts. Whole gang full of drug addicts. Ooh, chill. A skit it. All the way down this skit it. Ooh, popping out the rape and skit it. Skit it. And even landing a feature on the official Deadpool 2 soundtrack. <laughs> His celebrity status nice. was starting to reach new heights. Pump then collaborated with heavyweights of the music industry in 2018. I love it with Kanye West. You're such Tough. a fucking hoe. I love it. <laughs> yo, like me. yo, what the fuck? What, what, what goes into like thinking of something like this, bro? Like, what the fuck? Kanye West. You're such a fucking hoe. I love it. <laughs> be like fuck? me with Lil Wayne. Like me. Everybody wanna be like me. Multi millionaire with Lil Uzi Bird. Oh, and arms around you with the late XXX Tentacion. This was not a one hit wonder. Little Pump was taking over 2018 even stronger than 2017. No one would have expected the Little Pump experience would have lasted this long. And yet he was working with some of the biggest artists in the world and had all eyes on him for his next project.
The Harvard dropout was finally released in early 2019, but underwent an okay to an underwhelming performance. But if it seemed he was on top of the world from an outside perspective, why didn't it perform well? Well, for one, people moved on from Pump's music fast. His charismatic, chaotic teenage persona had him going viral and the majority of people would see him doing something, check it out, then quickly forget about it. But most importantly, Little Pump became one of the pioneers of something trendy. So when you do something that becomes successful or trendy, there's bound for someone to go and do it 10 times better. Now there's artists like 6 9 coming out gang violence, beef with every rapper, and taking internet antics to the extreme. Everything Little Pump built up from the clout era, but put on steroids. So you're saying, you're saying Little Pump made 6 9 Like his name was literally 6 9 and had 6 9 tatted on his forehead with rainbow hair. And there was only so much brain damage rap could handle. People were starting not to care for a kid screaming aesthetic Damn. and doing social media antics for the sake of staying relevant, when 6 9 was doing things much crazier. Every person who hated Pump was finally happy they were seeing his downfall. Now Pump was trying to milk any attention he possibly could get. He seemed more desperate than ever, shaving his eyebrows, wearing a sports bra, and dissing rappers for no reason. Fuck Eminem! You is- Damn bro, I'm over here like blazing you bro, this is what you do bro. I forgot about this bro, this was bro. Bro, are you dead bro? Are you- bro, are you- bro? Bro, oh, bro, you're making me as a, you're making me as like an as an old fan look bad, bro. It's lame as hell. Ain't nobody listening to your old ass. You lame as fuck, bitch. Now he got some attention from respected rappers, with the biggest response coming from J. Cole, whose lyrics practically predicted Little Pump and Smoke Perp's fall off in 1985. But nice enough, Little Pump and J. Cole had a sit-down interview together, which was very unexpected, but they handled their one-sided beef. Past that point though, the antics were getting old, and music was evolving, and it was time for Pump to evolve as well. Superstars of the world, Little Pimp. Hello everybody, how, how you guys feeling? He didn't drop any more singles for the rest of the year besides a few features. Crazy enough, labels still wanted him, offering substantial offers, even one label offering him $5 million, which Pump didn't sign. He wanted to stay independent. He was famous enough, rich enough, and had more than enough followers that a label couldn't offer him something I, that he felt he couldn't do himself. I, and while that seems reasonable, Pump couldn't have been more wrong. Lazy release after another with no marketing whatsoever, Pump released a surprise album with the producer Ronnie J in 2021, and no one cared. Everyone forgot about Little Pump to this point, and he was the last person that could drop a surprise album. Fast forward to 2023, and the release of Little Pump 2 only proved his continued decline. Because if your debut project was successful, might as well do the exact same thing. And it was the yeah. same. The quality of the music sounded directly from his debut album. But music has evolved. No one wants to hear this. And even if the sound was still normalized, his fans were no longer 16 year olds. They were now in their 20s. And so was Pump. And yet he was trying to imitate what he was when he was a 16 year old kid. He wasn't willing to evolve. It seems the little Pump saga was over. And the License any asset type in one simple plan. Try free for 30 days. Start creating with Adobe Stock. Lowe's knows you get to enjoy spring weather earlier. That's why we're giving you a sneak peek into our- The worst part is that Pump could have easily prevented this. If you ask someone their opinion on 6 9 in America, their response may conclude that he's fallen off. But yet, if you take a quick glance at his YouTube channel, it tells a much different story. 6 9 was aware of the longevity career catering to the American mainstream market and wisely pivoted to embrace Latin music. What I didn't mention is that Little Pump's music extended beyond appealing to the American or English market. He was consistently dropping Spanish music alongside the music he was already making for the main market. Surprisingly, the Latin community not only loved but embraced Little Pump, which opened a potential avenue for him to seamlessly transition into the realm of Latin music, especially after milking all that he could from the Harvard dropout and its clout persona. Most could speculate that Little Pump was actually thinking about this decision as well. Take a chance to keep trying to cater to the American market or evolve into an artist with a versatile and sustainable career. But Little Pump decided that appealing to the main market was the better choice. And not surprisingly enough, the decision ended up deeming his popularity altogether. So let's say he continued to focus on the American market. 
Why was he naked right now? Like he did in real life. Taking a hiatus what? to drop two projects imitating his younger self was a really bad look. If he took the hiatus to surround himself with talented and successful individuals, he could have turned into a versatile 360 artist, much like how XXXTentacion did before he passed. Little Pump and XXXTentacion shared a chaotic and rebel attitude towards the music industry. They were both somewhat villains of the industry in their own way. Late 2017, X decided to undergo a complete style change overall, surrounding himself with successful talents and musicians to emerge himself into a complete artist. And he came back very successful successful, dropping two extremely successful projects in just a couple months time span, even one being the most streamed hip hop album of all time, even if most don't consider most of the project rap. X obviously had more profound artistry than Pump back in their early careers, but it's crazy enough that Pump's first initial steps towards the artist evolution was seen in the song with X called Arms Around You. Pump brought an energy that was very unexpected coming from him. And while nothing was perfect, the song was appealing to both the American and Latin community. It was a step in I the see right that. direction. I see the small like steps that music. Pump needed to finally evolve, because it was the first and maybe only glimpse of evolution in the future of his craft. And while this is a big what if, like pretty big what if, like I would say Smoke Perp probably had a better chance at longevity in the main market. But hey, if really? Little Pump woke up right now and decided to revive his Damn, career, look at that B. Album, look at all this. He could gain his <laughs> Right now and look at that vi it's right back just from a i need that oh my god market he is still young look at very the rich and no one thought he would have lasted as long Fuck. as he, did. he finessed the entire american american music industry milking every dollar oh that he could god. from being a disingenuous he has full oh control of his God. music. And it's so up to beautiful, him bro. If he wants to put his focus bro. on leaving a larger legacy. Shit, bro. Chill. I want a fucking ad. Chill. All right, man. If y'all enjoyed it, man, leave a like, comment down. What are y'all thoughts about this? If y'all, uh, if y'all was or still are Lil Pump fans, comment down. What is your favorite song from him? Personally, bro, it's got to be D Rose, bro. D Rose is top tier, bro. Top fucking tier, bro. Listen to that shit. Seven, I think seven or eighth grade. Top fucking tier, bro. And consider subscribing, bro. If y'all want to see more videos like this, like I said, we don't we don't post we don't react to videos that I think are gonna like. We don't react to videos with high views. I we we react to videos that we want to react to that we like. I. Well, yeah, we post four to five videos per week, guys. Right? So subscribe. If y'all want to see more like this. With that being said, man, hope you have a good day. Hope you have a blessed day. It doesn't hurt to be kind to others. So with that being said, man, I'll catch you on the next one, alright? The Dukes. That's the real spill. Banana clip in that chopper, don't get peeled.